Welcome. This is Birth, baby. Your hosts are Sierra Morgan and Samantha Kelly. Sierra is a birth doula, hypnobirthing educator, and pediatric sleep consultant. Samantha is a birth doula, childbirth educator, and lactation counselor. Join us as we guide you through your options for your pregnancy, birth, and postpartum journey. In today's episode, we will talk about how chiropractic care can help in the perinatal period. We'll answer commonly asked questions about how chiropractic care can help pregnant and postpartum people as well as babies. Our guest today is Dr. Catherine Milo. She is the founder and lead clinician of BirthCo. She grew up one of eight siblings and spent her adult life bouncing around to four different states. Passion got her here, but the people made her stay in the great state of Texas. She's passionate about creating a fun and healthy culture in her private practice. Thank you so much for being here today, Dr. Milo. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Awesome. So I'd love to start off um, by just hearing how did you decide to become a chiropractor and what did that kind of education process look like for you? Yeah, for sure. So um, I chose chiropractic when I was eight years old, which is very early on in life to kind of choose your career. Uh, But I had a very unique experience with chiropractic. Um, Like you said in the bio, I have eight siblings. So um, my parents had a ton of kids and we were all super healthy. But my youngest brother, when he turned three, started having seizures. So he started having one seizure one day and then two seizures and then three seizures. And eventually he was having 20 seizures a day and 20 at night. Uh, My parents, like any amazing parent, took him to every specialist within three states. So he got all the tests done, all the blood work done, and no one could figure out what was going on with the system. And seizures are super complex. So um, the only answers they found out there were he might grow out of it, and here's a bunch of medications to try. So at one point, he was on eight medications, having 20 seizures a day very non-functional because by the time that he recovered from one seizure, he would have another one. He had about one an hour, um, sometimes more than that. And they were full on grand mal shaking seizures. Uh, So uh, it was about a six month process that my parents went on this pretty traditional medical journey to try to find answers for him. And at about the six month mark, my mom had a friend who was a chiropractor and she said, Hey, I know that that you've been trying a lot of things. Chiropractic can help regulate his system. If you want to try it, it's definitely not going to hurt anything. And my parents, you know, were just looking for answers. So they thought, well, you know, we'll try it. Um, So they took my brother to the chiropractor. All they did on the first visit was an adjustment. And then the next day, he had one less seizure than he had been having. And my mom tracked him pretty meticulously. So she was like, oh, this is interesting. Something changed. So um, he started getting adjusted regularly. The chiropractor also worked on some detox protocol and some nutritional changes to help uh, detox his system and regulate it, cut out sugars and inflammatory things in his diet. And over the next six months, my parents went through this more holistic approach uh, to treating him. And by the end of it, he stopped having seizures and he was able to get off all his medications. And me at eight years old thought that that was amazing. And I had no idea what chiropractors did, but they helped my brother and I was sold. So I knew at eight that I was going to be a chiropractor and I knew I was going to work with kids because that was the impact that uh, happened to me and my family. And it was completely life-changing. That is so cool that you were able to witness that at such a young age, um, And were you, where are you in that birth order and where is he in that birth order? Yeah. So I'm third from the oldest and he is second from the youngest. So, um, there are one, two, three, three between me and him. And did your family change everyone's diet or did they just do his, like all these changes? Did everyone have to go through them? Yeah, so I do remember that my parents took away ice cream. I have a very (laughs) vivid memory, and my mom would not buy ice cream anymore. So I think that we lightly changed our diets as a family. Of course, my mom did, you know, a lot of cooking at home for us, but not as strictly as they were 
not as strict as they were with my brother. And when you, so you guys had all of these kind of changes going for your, for your brother, did they also implement chiropractic care for any of you or just the person who is symptomatic? Uh, just for him, actually. And it's really funny. I never experienced chiropractic myself until I was enrolled in a chiropractic school. Wow, that's really interesting. You're like, I believe in it. I'm going to be one. And I've never had an adjustment. Yeah. And I don't even think I really knew what an adjustment was or felt like. I mean, I had watched my brother go through it as a kid, but it's a whole different experience when it's done on you. Um, And funny story, my first adjustment was done by a student. So it wasn't even the best adjustment (laughs) that I received the first time. Uh, But yeah, I, the concept of holistic health and healing your body from the inside out, it just really resonated with me. That's really cool. Yeah. So I um, knew what I wanted to do. So I got to chiropractic school as quickly as I could. I graduated high school a year early. I started taking undergrad classes and I did just the bare minimum that I had to do in order to get it, start my chiropractic education. Uh, And I want to say I was 20, 21 when I started chiropractic college. I remember turning 21 when I was in school um, and I did my doctorate and undergrad kind of side by side to speed up the process. Uh, But I started the doctorate program, which is about a three and a half to four year educational program. Um, Most people do their undergraduate degree first, and then they go and do their doctorate. I kind of did mine side by side to speed up the process. Uh, So it's about in full an eight year process if you do it, if you do it in order. Uh, I started chiropractic college. The first year is mostly basic sciences. So it's a lot of lectures and sitting in classrooms and learning about anatomy and neurology and biochemistry and all of those classes. Your second year is full of the clinical stuff. So that's when you really get hands on and you learn how to do the adjusting. You learn how to do more diagnosis. You learn how to um, work with patients in a clinical setting And pretty much everything that you would need to know from the clinical perspective, you learn in a classroom and in a lab during your second year. And that's so during your third and your fourth year, you can start um, working in clinicals. So you'll start in a student clinic and you'll be hands-on with students and their families. And then you'll move to an outpatient clinic. So you'll be seeing real patients that are coming in for treatment. And then if you choose, you can also go on and do an internship afterwards which is anywhere from three to four months, depending on what school you go to, where you actually work in a clinic and work under a doctor and learn from them directly. So I was on this journey, really focused on pediatric care throughout my schooling. It's kind of how I viewed my classes as I was taking in information. I was really interested in the pediatric information that I was getting. And then in my last uh, year of school, when I was put in the outpatient clinic, I was working under a staff doc that focused on pediatric care, and they always throw prenatal care with the pediatric care. So we were working with both. And for some reason, I ended up with more pregnant patients than I had pediatric patients. And that was really the moment I started connecting pediatric health with um, mom's health and them developing in utero and then the birth process and how important a smooth birth process was for a the foundation for a child's health. If you have a really traumatic, long, difficult birth, that highly impacts the baby and the baby's health going forward. And if it's a smooth and easy and and baby comes out without any trauma, then you've got them set up for a more successful, you know, health in the future. So I, I connected those dots and I just fell in love with prenatal care. So Um, when I graduated and opened up a practice, that was my niche, pediatric and prenatal, pediatric and prenatal. And then somewhere along the way, I want to say four or five years into practice, it was like right around COVID was hitting. I was noticing a lot of moms coming in postpartum for adjustments. And I realized that they just weren't going out and getting the care that, that they needed. There were some barriers there that they were facing. So, um, 
I started asking more questions like, why aren't you going to see a pelvic floor physical therapist? Do you know you need to see a pelvic floor physical therapist? You're hurting right now. What have you done? And so there's a couple of things I learned from that experience. One, childcare is a huge barrier for women postpartum getting the care that they need. Um, two, Absolutely. That one is so huge. And I hear it all the time. Like, who am I supposed, am I supposed to bring my brand new baby to these appointments? Yeah. And a lot of times they're, they're not even allowed in the room, uh, specifically with core and pelvic floor. Some, ta- some therapists don't allow the baby there and you've just had yeah. this baby, so you're supposed to take care of this baby. So it just, it's a huge, huge barrier. I remember that when I had my son, I went to a pelvic floor therapist and the one that I went to would not allow you to cancel They would charge you like $50 the first time. And the second time you just weren't a patient there anymore. And there were days when I was just exhausted that I so badly wanted to cancel instead of driving 40 minutes each way to this appointment. And that's the only one that took my insurance. Um, So yeah, I mean, that is a huge, huge thing. Plus if you're a nursing parent, forget it. Like you can't just leave your baby all the time with somebody else. Yeah. And that's a great point. Uh, Moms are exhausted. They forget about their appointments. Sometimes they're running late. Baby has a blowout. They're going to be 20 minutes late. Um, They show up and they're starving (laughs) is something I've noticed because they haven't had time to eat. So they need snacks. They need. I noticed I noticed that snack bin in Uh your place that I went to the other day for my massage. I totally (laughs) noticed that bin at the front desk. I was like, that's smart. Yeah. And we joke that it's for the kids because we want the kids to have gummy bears and be excited to come in. But it is just as much for the parents and especially for the new moms who need to come in and have a snack before they start with whatever care they're getting at our office. I love that. So it sounds like you really kind of came into it wanting to do kind of the 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 pediatric side and then the prenatal and pregnancy and all of that kind of fell in naturally. It did. Yeah. And now I feel like I've been in practice seven or eight years. It's just a very well-rounded um, scope of practice. We're really great at working with babies in the prenatal care and then the postnatal care as follow up it just it's really full circle for me and it's very fulfilling to be able to see mom through her pregnancy hear about her birth process see her newborn help the newborn with anything that they need help with and then help the mom to recover as well so what can chiropractic care in pregnancy help with yeah so i am clearly very biased I think that the prenatal period is the most important time to get chiropractic care. Uh, But there are a ton of benefits to getting adjusted during pregnancy. Some of the big buzzwords that I throw out there that, uh, that lights up every mom's face is we know that having a pelvis aligned and getting adjusted during pregnancy can help shorten your labor and make it less painful. And who does not want that when they're about to face the labor process. And it makes sense because if your pelvis is nice and aligned, then your sacrum can kick backwards, your pelvis can open, um, and that those processes can happen very smoothly and very naturally without any sort of physical restrictions. Uh, But some of the other things that it can help with, back pain is probably the number one reason why people come into our office because they're having back pain or sciatic pain is also considered a back pain. Um, Headaches mid-back pain, pubic bone pain, so pain that's kind of in the front of the groin area, we can help with that. Pubic symphysis dysfunction is the diagnosable word for pain in the front of the pubic bone. Um, Pelvic floor heaviness we can help with. Um, Another benefit of getting adjusted during the prenatal period is that it helps to regulate your nervous system. So when you get an adjustment, it's going to turn on your parasympathetic nervous system, which is your rest and relax, and start to dampen your sympathetic nervous system. So we know that baby learns how to regulate their sympathetic nervous system and their cortisol in utero based on how mom regulates their stress system. So chiropractic can really help to push you into a more relaxed state of mind. You're Another speaking thing my that... language, Dr. Milo, with all yeah. of that, because, you know, in hypnobirthing, we talk all the time about the sympathetic and parasympathetic spheres. And um, it's so cool. I, I've never thought to explain it that way, that 
it can help with that part of it. So I'm so excited to be able to pass that along too. I only ever think about this, you know, the physical structure of your bones and your ligaments and all of that, but that's really cool. Yeah. And talking about like baby, giving baby a foundation for how their health is going to function, how they're going to navigate the world later on. It really starts with mom and their ability to regulate all the things internally. Um, So really during the prenatal period, focusing on different types of body work, including chiropractic, things like massage are helpful as well. And craniosacral therapy, the things that help you regulate will help baby to learn to regulate as well. So that's a really cool um, impact that chiropractic can have. And I would say one of the other big ones is that when your pelvis is aligned and all the soft tissue attached to the the pelvis is functioning the way we want it to, it creates the space for baby to get in the most optimal position. And that's really important for the laboring process. Or if you're not going to have a vaginal birth, you still want baby to be in the best possible position because that's going to create the most space for them to grow and to prevent a flat head or torticollis and things like that. So um, whether you're going to do vaginal birth, C-section birth, chiropractic can be hugely beneficial to you, but also to your baby. It's all so connected. I mean, we talk about that too. You, you know, you do all of it on your end and the chiropractic and you guys do the massage and all of that and all the different modalities to help people. And that's kind of where we are, but on the doula spectrum of childbirth education and like, you know, if you don't, you don't know what you don't know and helping form that birth process from the very beginning, you know, before you ever have a baby, you can change how you're going to have a baby just by what you're learning, what you're putting into your body, how you change your mindset. And then afterward with lactation and all of these things that we're trying to have a well-rounded practice to help people. And I, I really love that about your practice, that it's a little bit of a one-stop shop with some things. Yeah. Thank you so much. It also, um, going back to barriers, if you have more things, more services in one space, it just makes it a little bit easier. I'm sure you guys have found that if you can provide the education, which is so, so important and the lactation help and, you know, birth help, birth support, postpartum support all in one place, uh, patients are more likely to utilize more of those resources. And they really, really need to. I think a lot of first-time moms don't recognize that they're going to need all of the things and that it can be so helpful for them. Sometimes second and third time, moms are a little bit more prepared. Uh, But I love, love, love how much education that you guys provide for your patients. Thank you. Yeah, that's definitely a big passion of ours. Um, Absolutely. So talking about like, you know, chiropractic care and pregnancy, when would you recommend that people start getting adjustments during pregnancy? Is it ever too early to start getting adjustments or too late for it to do anything? Yeah, that's a great question. I always say earlier is better than later, but it's never too late to come in. So you can come in and get adjusted during your first trimester. It's totally safe and healthy. And uh, your relaxin really spikes in the beginning of pregnancy with Uh, implantation. So your joints get loose really fast. So it's a great time to start working on pelvic alignment and balance of the muscles before you're also carrying the weight of baby and your posture is changing. So the earlier you can come in, the better, as well as wanting to go ahead and regulate your nervous system and really get your body prepped for a lot of the changes that you see in second and third trimester. Uh, I, I always, always recommend to come in early. And if you can do chiropractic before you become pregnant to even more prep your body, that's even, uh, that's the most amazing thing that you could do because you are making sure that you're regulated before all the hormones kick in and your body's all of a sudden adjusting to this brand new crazy thing that's happening uh, inside. So earlier is better. That being said, We have a lot of patients that come in later once they're experiencing the back pain because their body's a little bit torqued or twisted or baby will, or uh, mom will come in because baby's not in the most optimal position. So we're working on trying to get baby into the most optimal position or create the space for baby, baby to find that position. So we see people all the way up until baby is born. Uh, Sometimes we'll see new patients at 38 or 39 weeks. Uh, So really anytime is better than no time for sure. 
And is there a certain gold standard for how much you're seeing? Because we have some people say, oh, my chiropractor says I need to come in two times a week, but that feels like so much to me. Or they'll say, you know, oh, mine said I can come in every couple of weeks. Is there, is it individual for what someone's going through or is there kind of a standard? Yeah. So you're going to find it's very individualized for person to person. You'll also find within our industry, different chiropractors have different philosophies on how often you should come in. So you will find chiropractors that pretty immediately want to see you multiple times a week. Um, To give you perspective, our practice will typically see people, pregnant people once a week. And that varies based on what's happening in their body and also the patient's goals. Because sometimes seeing a patient twice the, twice a week, though we want that and we think that's most optimal, it's not realistic for a lot of reasons, for time, for finances. So some chiropractic is better than no chiropractic. And when you're looking for a chiropractor, you really need to shop around to find one that you really get along with well and you really believe with their philosophical approach to how they're going to be treating you throughout your pregnancy. And most chiropractors will lay that out the first or second visit. They'll say, this is how many times I want to see you, and this is why, and then this is how we go about scheduling you, and here's how much flexibility I I will allow for my patient to have in choosing kind of their own schedule within limits. And shopping around is just part of the process, right? Like when you're interviewing doulas or when you're interviewing providers, like that's, you know, you want to find somebody who matches up with you in all of these different ways. So having, you know, being able to chat with a couple of different people is okay because in the long run, we want everybody to find the right fit for them. Yeah. And I say that to my doctors, I have a couple different doctors that work for me and some patients come in, they really prefer my personality and the way that I run the appointments and other people come in and they have a preference for one of my other doctors and it doesn't hurt my feelings. I want people to be with a doctor that they connect with, especially because it's in chiropractic, at least it's a very hands-on personal um, appointment. So if you are not feeling connected or comfortable with your provider, absolutely, you need to go look and find someone that you do connect with, that you feel comfortable with them touching your body and you can feel relaxed and you like the flow of the process. And also keep in mind, you're going to be spending a good amount of time with them. So you want to be able to have conversation and it be fun and light and an enjoyable part of your week versus kind of like, oh, I got to go to the chiropractor today. That's Um, a good a good question too, is how much time you said you're going to be spending a lot of time with them. Like how long are those appointments usually? Yeah. So there's variable chiropractor to chiropractor. Some people will provide shorter uh, appointments and adjustment really does not take that long. Five, 10 minutes is pretty typical. Um, I really like to spend more time with my patients. So a regular appointment for at our office takes 15 to 20 minutes. But with our appointments, we also offer some soft tissue work and some rehab. Um, We sprinkle in some education. So in our office, we're spending a little bit more time with a patient than some offices will. But I would say if your chiropractor is spending less than 10 minutes with you, maybe ask some questions first about what you're going to be getting in that amount of time. Because that's a pretty quick appointment. And chiropractors can, can provide excellent care in a short amount of time. Uh, but some chiropractors do not, and it's just yeah. a rough process. And when you're pregnant, you don't want the process to be rushed. Uh, I I remember when I first started seeing my chiropractor, I was with one doctor in the office, and uh, it it just it felt. I don't know. I just felt a little bit uncomfortable. I think it was a it was a male provider, and I was just kind of you know not not quite as comfortable with, um, you know with all of the adjustments that I had to have done. And then I ended up switching to a new provider and just realizing like how different it felt when I could let myself fully relax into the adjustment was so huge because I had, so you know, I was so much more comfortable with her than I was with the other provider and he was great. It's just not quite right for me. And so that was, that was a big part of it, just being able to relax into that adjustment. I think you might like to know, Dr. Milo, I actually have 
clients that say things like, I really look forward to my appointments. I look forward to going. And it's like a community. They they kind of feel like it's going to see a friend because you do see that provider multiple times. And they're excited to watch your belly grow and see you change. Yeah, I would agree. And I feel like the majority of my patients, we are friends and we do have some personal conversations and we build time in for that because it's important during the prenatal process to have people that you can talk to. Uh, it's especially important postnatally because a lot of moms after they give birth are more isolated. So, you know, I might be the only person they see the whole week. That's not a baby. So the conversational part is sometimes I think as important as the clinical treatment part. So how do adjustments differ in pregnancy than they would um, pre-pregnancy? Yeah, that's a great question. And these tips I'm also going to give you will help you navigate the world of finding a prenatal chiropractor. So the technique that's used during pregnancy is called the Webster technique. And the Webster technique is really focused on alignment of the pelvis and the soft tissue that's connected to the pelvis. And most chiropractors will do full spine adjusting along with the Webster technique, but the Webster technique is a very specialized technique. And in order to be certified to use Webster, you have to go get that certification outside of your traditional doctorate schooling. So if we're going to go back to... Um, chiropractic schooling, when you graduate with your doctorate as a chiropractor, you're kind of a, what I would call a family chiropractor. You're not specialized at that point. You just can kind of, they let you go to see anyone you want to see. So in the last 15 or 20 years, chiropractic's kind of made a turn towards more specialization within the industry. And there are now programs that chiropractors go to in order to specialize. So someone could specialize in neurology or functional medicine And your prenatal chiropractors are going to go get specialized in prenatal and pediatric care. And the biggest organizational uh, body in chiropractic that does that certification is the ICPA. And they have a directory on their website that allows you to find chiropractors who are Webster certified and also find chiropractors who have certifications above and beyond Webster. So there are some higher up certifications that your chiropractors can get that require a ton of hours in order to uh, be better equipped to treat this more specialized population. I heard someone mention one time that, and I don't know, within the last year or so, that the Webster technique actually isn't taught anymore. Is that true? Or like the person who taught it passed away or something? Can you clarify? Yeah. So the person who created Webster, Dr. Webster, he has passed away at this point. Webster is still taught in some schools, but not all schools. It is not taught in an all-encompassing way in a chiropractic college setting. So you might, they might barely touch on it when you're in your doctorate program, but to really fully understand Webster, you need to go take the class through the ICPA. And that's when you get certified. Okay. That's helpful. That makes sense. For sure. So uh, a couple of things about Webster and prenatal chiropractic care in general. Um, Webster is very focused on sacral alignment and round ligament release. So round ligament has some smooth muscle tissue in it. It can contract and, and decrease the amount of space that we have around the belly. So uh, Webster adjustment typically is going to be with the patient face down. So your chiropractor needs to have some sort of uh, ability to accommodate your belly. So it's either a dropout table for a prenatal adjustment or pillows that your belly lays in. And then they will flip you over to your back and they'll do round ligament release. That's the most kind of basic form of Webster. A more advanced practitioner will also do um, release of other muscles that are attached to the pelvis. Most Webster practitioners are not going to do a lot of sideline type of adjustments because it's difficult to do sideline adjustments without twisting and torquing too much. And we want to avoid a lot of torquing during pregnancy. Uh, So that's more specialized to prenatal is not to do the sideline adjustments. Um, And then I would say outside of that, 
prenatal chiropractor is going to be pretty knowledgeable on all things posture and movement surrounding uh, the prenatal period. So at our office, we talk a lot about abdominal separation, diastasis, pelvic floor health. We check all of our patients for those things. We talk about posture, adaptations. There's a lot of education and knowledge that can be given by a prenatal chiropractor that doesn't necessarily get given if someone's not specialized. So for that first appointment, I always tell people to look for someone who's initial appointment is quite a bit longer than a traditional appointment because they need time to do an exam on you, give you some education, really check you and, and the things that you're experiencing and going through very thoroughly, because it's going to be different than if you were not pregnant. Yeah, that's really, that's really good information. Thank you for sharing all of that. So after you have a baby, would it be helpful for someone to come in and see their chiropractor again after they have a baby as kind of part of that prenatal package, or does it not really do as much after? Yeah, the postpartum period is a huge period of healing and adjusting and hormone shifting, and your pelvis has just gone through a pretty traumatic event. So it's going to be a very rare instance where after you give birth vaginally, that your pelvis is not a little bit twisted and torqued and a little bit off because you just pushed a baby out. And even with a C-section, you've cut through many layers of muscle. Your stability is not there. Your pelvis is not going to be able to be stabilized as well. So what you want to do is make sure that you're getting adjusted during the postpartum period so that once most of the relaxant is cycled out of your system, your pelvis is in alignment. So you don't end up with long-term issues later on because you've kept your pelvis in alignment And you're going to be adapting to new postures. Now you're going to be feeding baby. You're going to be hunched over. And so that's a whole new way of your body needing to stabilize itself. And so I find postpartum, we do a lot of work on the pelvis, but we also move up to the mid back and the shoulders and the neck, because now that that area is hurting along with getting your pelvis stabilized. So yes, the postpartum period is critical for healing. I have found, in fact, I had a patient this week tell me, she had two very similar vaginal births. And the first one, she said that she had a really hard time healing from it. She had a second degree tear. And she was like, it was six weeks before I was feeling myself. And I was feeling like that tear was mostly healed up. And she came in a week after she gave birth. And we started adjusting her weekly. And by the third week postpartum, she said, I feel light years better than I did the first time around. So really The more stress you can take off the tissue and the pelvis as it's healing, the better. And again, talking about regulating your nervous system, postpartum, you're not going to be sleeping as well. You're going to be adjusting to having a new baby at home. There's plenty of stressors that come with that. So just keeping your nervous system as low key relaxed as possible is going to help your physical body heal up. And I hear all the time people complain about, well, now, you know, my hips feel a little better, but now my shoulders hurt and my neck hurts. And we have to talk a lot about, well, if you're nursing, are you bringing baby to you or are you coming to baby and, and all of those sorts of things. And just you saying that reminded me, like you have flashbacks to when you nursed your own kids. Cause for me, I'm like, oh my gosh, I just remember that tight, the tight shoulders. And after labor, if you were tense at all in labor, your upper body is really tight and tense. Um, so yeah, that's a it's a good reminder for people that like just because you had the baby doesn't mean you stop taking care of yourself. We always take care of ourselves better, it seems, when we're doing it because of our child. Um, but it's like once the baby's out, all of a sudden now we just focus on baby and we really need to also focus on the person who just had the baby. Yeah, absolutely. I see that all the time. Once baby comes, mom's focus is solely on how is baby doing, especially if baby's struggling if they're struggling with latching issues or they're colicky or anything above and beyond what you would normally deal with with a newborn, mom has no idea what's happening in her body because she's just trying to get by. So we try to educate a lot in the prenatal period about coming in postpartum and taking care of yourself and bringing baby in postpartum and getting adjustments done on baby because they just went through a very stressful, even the most natural vaginal birth, there is stress on baby's body and system. So we want to make sure that 
baby is relaxed, that you're relaxed. And as a family, you guys are functioning as well as you can function at home. So what, why should someone see a chiropractor? Um, or I should say, why would someone want to bring their baby in for an adjustment? And what would that look like? Yeah, so a lot of our patients that we see through the prenatal period, we've already kind of talked about bringing baby in afterwards for more of a wellness type visit. So the birth was stressful, no matter how easy it was. Let's get baby checked to make sure that they have full range of motion they're relaxed, and that they're functioning the best that they can function as early as possible. That's pretty foundational for their health for the rest of their life. That being said, a lot of mamas bring their babies in that we didn't see during the prenatal period. And there are a few things that we see a lot in our office. I'd say the the biggest reason people bring their baby babies in is there's some sort of latching, breastfeeding, lip and tongue tie issue. So Baby is not able to latch on as well. They're coming on and off. They're super colicky. They're maybe getting air in. We can help with all of those things. I also find that moms will bring babies in if they are not able to turn their head side to side because we want to prevent that head from getting flat. Or if it's starting to flat flatten, we need to do things to prevent it from getting worse. A lot of times we can prevent a helmet very early on. If a lot of patients I see six, eight months that have flat heads in my head, I'm thinking if I just had this baby at a couple weeks old, they would have maybe never had to have a helmet or we wouldn't have these, um, these issues later on. So those are some of the other reasons, colic and gas and gut issues. We can help with that via adjustments and some nutritional counseling, um, in general, if baby's uncomfortable or crying or mom's intuition's clicking in that something's wrong, I tell them bring baby in right away. And I had a mom last week actually that brought her baby in two, three weeks old. And she said, uh, I don't know what's going on with baby. Baby's eating fine, but super fussy, seems uncomfortable. Like we're not sleeping at all. And I just, I wanted to try this. And she brought the baby in, we gave an adjustment. And the next week she said, baby has not cried since the adjustment except for when she's hungry or needs something so that kind of amazing cry that you hear and moms know a cry that's uncomfortable versus a cry for my I need my diaper changed or I'm hungry so if you're getting that sense that something's going on with baby you're not quite sure what it is that's a great time to bring them into the chiropractor to get them assessed and And then uh, oh sorry go ahead a pediatric adjustment looks very different than an adult adjustment. I always That was like, going to be my question. <laughs> yeah, I get that question all the time. And I can't tell you how many parents come in and they are on edge because they're like, I've been adjusted before and I'm very worried about what's about to happen. Uh, but pediatric adjustments, totally different than adult adjustments. The pressure that we use on a baby is about four ounces. So that's about as much pressure as you would use to indent a tomato. Baby doesn't have formed joints or bones or ligaments. So we are just putting little tiny pressures in different areas to help align the spine. I also will do some soft tissue work. Some chiropractors will do some cranial sacral work. It is very, very gentle. In fact, I've had patients ask me if I'm doing anything while I'm working on baby. So it it is very gentle. Most babies, if they're a month or younger, will sleep through the adjustment. Some babies will get fussy here or there, especially if they're not used to a lot of uh, like hands-on touch on their back. If mom and dad aren't doing a lot of massage or something like that, they might get a little little fussy. But in general, it's not super uncomfortable for a baby to get adjusted. That being said, if baby does have torticollis or a fractured clavicle or there's been some trauma in the neck area, they might be a little sore when we go in there and we do some adjusting. And I like to compare it to As an adult, if you get a massage, some areas are a little bit more sore than other areas. So sometimes the baby will be a little sore and react in a little bit of a fussy way, but nothing that we do as a pediatric chiropractor is painful or intense or super uncomfortable for baby. It's so funny to hear you say that some people ask you, are you even doing anything? Because I mean, 
I'm going to call my husband out. He may or may not ever listen to this podcast, but he kind of feels like chiropractic care is just like witchcraft, you know, like he just doesn't understand it. And we have a good friend that's a chiropractor and he'll go to her if he's in enough pain. But I'm like, oh, mm -hmm, don't believe in it, huh? But you're going to go. So it's just funny that they would say like, are you even doing anything? Because it really is that soft. And when I got chiropractic care, when my daughter was really little, I remember the doctor, uh, the chiropractor saying to my daughter, calling himself the popcorn doctor because he made mommy's joints sound like popcorn. And then when he did it to her, because finally she consented to having herself be adjusted, I remember her being like, mine didn't sound like popcorn, you know, because he was so much more gentle and they just don't do it the same way. So that that really is interesting the way you put it about um, kind of how to bruise a tomato that that really gives a good visual. Yeah, in a baby baby, we're not going to get any cavitation or sound out of the joints because there's no gas buildup. Their joints are too young. They're not developed. Um, us as adults, we're too old. So we get stuck joints and then gas builds up and that has to be released. But we don't find that in little babies. So if you had one piece of advice that you could give to everyone who's listening in regards to chiropractic care in the perinatal period, what would that be? So my biggest piece of advice that I give people, especially people that don't live in Austin and can't come see me, is to find a chiropractor that specializes. That's really, really important to me versus just your average Joe chiropractor, because you'll get so much more out of your adjustments if you are working with someone who just works in the field. They will also be a huge resource for you and help you find other, other things that you might need during your pregnancy. So my biggest piece of advice is to find someone who specialized. My second biggest piece of advice is to go get chiropractic care. It is so, so important and it can have a huge impact on your birth and it can have a huge impact on baby and baby's development. But if you're going to invest your time, your finances into chiropractic care anytime in your life, the prenatal period, I would say is the number one time to do it. That's awesome. Thank you so much for all of this information you have shared. I just feel like this is going to be invaluable to the people that are listening. And we, if we would love for you to be able to share where people can find you, especially since a lot of our listeners will be in the Austin area, um, you know, how, how they can find you, your socials, all of that. And we'll also add those to the show notes. Yeah, of course. So our office is named Birth Co. And you can find us on the web at birth-co.com. We've got three locations, South, West, west and north austin if you want to come see us in person and then our our social media handles are birthco.chiro we're pretty active on uh instagram we're trying to get our real game up right now <laughs> <laughs> we we could do better at that i'm not a real gal myself um thank you so much dr milo and we always are so appreciative of the help that you provide to the clients that we send your way we always know that they're in good hands of course. And thank you guys for putting this together. The, these educational pieces, like you said, are so invaluable for moms to have. All right. We'll talk soon. Thanks. Bye. Thank you for joining us on Birth, baby. Be sure to tune in next week as we start talking about what to do when things don't go according to plan. Thanks again to Longing for Orpheus for our music. You can look him up on Spotify. Remember to leave a review, share, and follow wherever you get your podcasts. See you next week.